High Q season three, episode five. Individual versus numbers. Interesting. That's kind of the thematic exploration I was expecting in the match between these two teams. Yeah, on the heels of this epic Suki block, one of the one of my favorite moments of the show so far. How does it feel? How does it feel? Yeah, damn right. Damn right. How do they respond to this, I wonder? What kind of adjustments are they going to make? For real? Can you do that? Coach can just slap you across the face? Uh, they don't really lose sets, right? I mean, they, oh, he slapped himself. He did it for the coach. 1-1. One, one. We have a chance. He's, I mean, but they're still they're still the same team. Still Ushiwaka. I uh, bet he's gonna be riled up. But he's pissed. How the teams respond is so critical. And it seems like Shira Torizawa is still so focused. Yeah. They could have broken them. You know, if you're not used to losing or losing sets. Huh. Setter flashback. He is a monster. He chose his philosophy. It's very interesting that he looked up to Oikawa. Sheer power. I was pretty damn cool. Wow, that's with a deflection. He makes it look so awesome. <laughs> that's a very interesting ambition. Whoa, wait, what? They just, we just speed through the third set? We lost that in like five seconds. That was kind of heartbreaking. I believe it. I know he can do it. Face to face again. I wonder if Suki's words to him at the end of the last episode were foreshadowing. What if Hinata blocks him as well? Ushiwaka is such a lover of the game. At a moment like this, issuing a challenge for Hinata to become better, to me it doesn't feel like a taunt, you know, to demoralize him. It feels like, uh, you know, I expect more from you, given what I've seen. He said he hates mediocre players, but I think he recognizes something great in Hinata, but he needs to earn it. Not... Yeah, not quite there yet. Something about the demeanor. It's not Kagama's spiking ability yet. Numbers. Power versus numbers. It's, it kind of bothers me that we just lost the whole set. Like, off screen. But here we go. Oh, way out. Daichi's still recovering from his major injury. Matsuki. Right, I mean, as great as that was, it was one block, right? He's in command. I believe in his IQ. Trust in Ishinoya, too. You can move your hand a little bit, too. There you go, there you go. I love the faith, man. The faith they have in him. And the faith he has in himself, too. Nishinoi just has just such singular focus. There you go. There you go. There it is. A tag team. <laughs> they just drag Suki into the, into the mess. I'm expecting Coach to, like, blow a fuse at some point. God, this trash talking is so infuriating. They're kind of opposite. Let's see. Let's find out. That was so elegant. <laughs> That's her. A toss. Oh no, they're getting used to it. Someone! Cover it! That's not good. That was deflating. I don't want to see them fall to a two set deficit. Look who's here. Is, and isn't this the Shira Torizawa coach's rival? Yeah, yeah, that seems to be what we're exploring very directly in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. I believe in Karasuna's approach. Damn it, that, that block last episode was so 
felt so good and now yeah it, it is frustrating it's super frustrating i'm frustrated i thought it would turn turn the tide it gave me so much hope hey lisa's lips all right you gotta hand on it can you that's pretty far Putting some distance, letting him get to it. Come on, Tanaka. Oh no! Tanaka, his first fail in the whole series. <laughs> I hate you, don't like you. And now he's gonna trash talk some more. He's good at reading their tells. <laughs> he did though. It wasn't luck. Get mad, Tanaka. He's so calm. It's kind of infuriating, right? And terrifying. He's not gonna he's not gonna make mistakes. It's not gonna be him that lapses. It's gotta be them that picks it up. Another game where Hinata's kinda quiet. Challenged him. Yeah. He issued a big challenge. We should walk a wins either way. Oh, he's not gonna break. He's as in it as ever. If Hinata crumbles, Ushiwaka has proved right and he wins. And he can just disregard Hinata. If Hinata steps it up and does great, Ushiwaka gets excited. And actually ends up having a worthwhile foe or rival. A lot of people would break in that situation. But Hinata is not that guy and this is not that team. Collide. Collide and have a concussion. <laughs> Get up there. Nothing you can do about that. He's setting up. Okai's working with him personally. He's got Hinata on his radar. Damn, he got up there. Show Ushiwaka's face. I want to see how he reacts to that. Oh, oh, oh. Uh huh. His <laughs> recognition. He looks intrigued. This is one of those situations that plays into something we've seen from Hinata early on. He doesn't really need to lead right now because the team is so strong. And it's part of what makes this sequence of matches so great is that more than I expected, it's not the Hinata show. It's an all around team effort. All of them are shining in the way that the show does so well. But Hinata has expressed the desire to take charge, take the lead, have that freedom to go a little bit wild. And the team, I think, supports him in that at this point. It would be really cool to see him step up and seems kind of perfect given the setup with Ushiwaka and Hinata and Kageyama in their fateful meeting. <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't doubt you know his stamina. Out of all the things to worry about, that's not one of them for me. Oh, he's just going for it. Whoops, he went for it a little bit too too much. It's very Hinata. Alright, let's implement this new thing. Not a front and center. Other side of the court. And again, other side of the court. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I wonder how many kilometers he's going to end up running this game. Just floated over that chair. Hey, look who it is. I wonder how Ikawa really feels about this. He didn't say he's rooting for anyone, but why do I get the feeling he would be rooting for Karasuno? Yeah, not this time. This game also going by so fast. <laughs> There's something so great about this. My Hinata, yeah. And they collide. He touched it, right? He touched it? Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, don't worry about that. And back to the other side. It's a monster, is what I was saying. Thought I can get it some revenge. Yeah, there it is. Why was that so sweet? So touching. Heavy breathing intensifies. Power versus the group. 
Well, I'm glad everyone's having a good time. <laughs> it's so great to see both teams be at their best and playing in a way that's creative. Going back to something that's been said multiple times in the show, it's when you are really good at what you're doing that you can have fun with it. We're not really seeing errors. We're not seeing self-doubt. We're not seeing just basic failures. We are just seeing two amazing teams go head to head, adapting to each other. The philosophy of these two teams was brought into really clear focus this episode, although it had already been built really clearly through their play styles and monologues up to this point. And I honestly do think Carson's outlook on things is the winning outlook given similar levels of skill to begin with. In sports, especially I think in volleyball, which is a game where the ball is moving around so fast between different different teammates in any given play, three people might touch the ball and in the next play, a different three people might touch the ball. You imagine that it will be the strength and cohesiveness of the team that generates the most power. And then there's something bigger than that as well, where generally given a certain endeavor, maybe especially given things of the physical nature, it doesn't matter how strong one person is. Two people in a similar range will be exponentially more powerful in what they're able to do. And then that just grows even more with a third, fourth person, etc until the point where one individual's contribution is almost insignificant. What's holding them together is that Ushiwaka is that good, you know, like he's just so high that it ends up being really close. And of course, the other teammates of his are pretty, pretty good as well. They're, they're no slashes. Watching this match is giving me so much anxiety because I kind of went into it thinking that Shura Torizawa was just too big of an opponent to beat. Watching them struggle, watching them take a set, watching Suki's block, watching Hinata step it up. It's giving me a lot of hope that they, they, they're win. You know, they might win. They could win this game, but I'm like scared. <laughs> I'm scared to believe. I would really love to see them win. It's been my dream, you know, it's been my dream since season one to see them get a victory, especially for the, the senpai. What's cool is how real it feels to me that they actually do have a chance, given everything they've, they've gone through, you know, being omnivores. So little of this is unsupported by previous games. I feel intuitively how they got to this point, and I feel intuitively why they have a chance to win. And them winning wouldn't be plot armor, or whatever you'd call it in this case. It wouldn't be just they're the protagonists, so they win. It's like, no, their philosophy, their strategy, their outlook as individuals and as a team is why they are the protagonist in the first place and that whole thing put together is a winning thing and mirrors something important about life the underlying themes to me feel real and although i can't explain it one feeling this episode gave me is that a lot of that will actually hinge on hinata the team is so great and they've established this baseline but hinata and kageyama are are kind of the show's protagonists, right? And a lot of the spiritual weight of the show is Hinata's vision to overcome his own obstacles, to rise to the occasion, to play among giants, and to see what it's like at the top. And this could be his moment. You know, these next couple episodes could be the moment where he does exactly that. Everything is in place.